Hi everybody. Caesar's animations, they're pretty cool, very, very powerful, yet very easy to use, and they're a great way to bring some liveliness to our applications. But there's one thing though, for all the great things they bring to the table, they do not have an easy way for us to restart them. There's no built-in capability that allows us to say, an animation just played, or it's in the middle of playing, I want you to, to restart it so I can play it again from the beginning. That does not exist, but that's okay. That's why we're here and we're gonna look at how to build the ability to have our animations restart in this video. So I'm gonna cut right to the chase. Here's a TLDR. To make an animation be restartable or to make it restart, you have to do a few things all entirely in JavaScript. First, find the element that you have your CSS animation name defined on. This is usually the animation property if you're in the shorthand or the animation name property if you're doing it longhand. And set that value to none. So in this case, imagine we have a DOM element referenced by the variable element, element.style.animationName name equals none. And that clears our animation from being associated with the keyframes that will actually make it do all its cool things. And then the next step is to completely unset it from none to whatever is defined in CSS. And the way we do that is by doing a request animation frame and inside of the request animation frame have a function whose only job it is to set the value of animation name, the animation name property to clear it, to get it back into our CSS world. And these five lines will get us exactly what we want. And we'll talk a little bit later on what exactly these lines do as part of a larger example. And so, I want to kind of take those lines of code that we saw here. And if you want to follow along, here's a link to the code pen where we can go through and actually look at how we can apply those four lines to a particularly simple example. So here I have an example, the same one that's gonna be in the code pen. What we have is a very simple animation of a blue circle that is, you know, in whose scale increases up and down. Each time I refresh it, you can see that the, the circle scale increases and decreases. And it's a restart button that right now when I press it, it doesn't really do much. Our goal will be to have this restart button each time it's clicked, restart the animation so that way I don't have to refresh the page to show you what exactly is going on. Now, to look at the markup very briefly, the markup doesn't have too much going for it. It's the, we have a div element called container, whose class value is container. That is the outer, the outer border of both the circle and the button. We have our button itself, restart button with ID value of restart button. And then we have the div circle of class, with, sorry, div with a class value of circle. That is the actual animation itself. So nothing too fancy there. And our animation is entirely defined in our circle style rule, where you can see that animation name is set to scale up, iteration count is one, duration is one, fill mode is set to both. And I do encourage you to set animation fill mode. The reason is that when you're restarting your animation and the animation is temporarily removed, there may be times on slower machines or on a mobile iOS devices where your animation will seem like to, it jumped from an animation less state to a state where the keyframe values are actually being applied. And that may look a bit jarring. So unless you have a strong reason to not specify animation fill mode to both, I encourage you to specify that. And then lastly, we just have our keyframes itself scale up. Nothing interesting to call out here. We're just changing the scale value. All right. So now that you have a brief idea of what our animation is doing, which is not a whole lot, the important detail is that the animation name CSS property is specified on our element with class value is circle. So the first thing I'm gonna do is before we get to the circle and restarting the animation itself, I wanna make sure that clicking the restart button triggers an event handler where a restart code can actually live. So the first thing is gonna be let restart button equals document.query selector, and then hashtag restart button. So just making sure that we get a reference to the DOM element directly in our, in our JavaScript. The next one is restart button dot add event listener, and then click restart animation and set that value to false. And that all now what, what this means is that each time the restart button is clicked, call an event handler called restart animation which hasn't been defined yet, but we're gonna fix that right now by defining it. We start animation, if I can spell it correctly. And inside this particular event handler is where code's gonna live. That's gonna be the, the four lines we saw earlier on being able to set the animation name property to none and then eventually clear it so the value from CSS is reapplied. So the first thing is to get a reference to a circle element. Let circle equals document.query selector 
and we just auto complete there to simplify a few keystrokes that circle and now circle dot style dot animation name equals none sets it to a value where there is no keyframe associated with it right now but it's explicitly specified and I'll request animation frame and inside of it I'm going to specify an anonymous function using arrow functions to simplify the function and return you know, logic and specify in here circle dot style dot animation name equals close bracket okay so now if everything worked correctly and I really hope it did clicking the restart button should cause our animation to replay okay something isn't working right which is okay you know that's why we're doing this you know I'm quoting it live let's look at the console and see what's going on here and restart animation is not defined restart animation oh of course I misspelled animation is this restart annihilation whichever whatever that means okay so now that one crisis has been averted let's see if this works properly all right perfect each time I click the restart button you can now see that the blue circle animation that we defined earlier is properly playing now the reason why this code works the way it does it's there are a lot of articles there there's a great thread on stack overflow there's a great article on CSS tricks they all have a different variation of how to make this example work and my goal was to make this work in a way that not only worked on desktop browsers but also on mobile browsers as well both Android and iOS and the all the approaches had some weird quirks to them and so this was the approach that worked really well because at a high level we all agree that the, one of the first things you want to do is make sure animation is no longer associated with the keyframe. So it has no, no concept of what it needs to do when it starts running. So this is correct. Now, what we want to do though, is then once that has been set to none, we want to reset it. We want to get it back to the value that it needs to be. Now, one thing is instead of setting it to a blank value, I can hard code it back to the value of scale up and that will be completely fine. The downside is that this makes the code less portable, especially for dealing with many elements that are animating and you wanna have each animation have its own ability to restart. This allows us to have a more generalized approach where the only parameter will really be the element itself, the animation name properties on, as opposed to animation name and keyframe. But that is neither here nor there. So I don't wanna to go too far into that rabbit hole of like thinking about what ifs and hypothetical scenarios. The thing we wanna make sure though is that if this code, circle style animation name, happened to be immediately after it, from the point of view of our browser, from the view of our web rendering engine, all both of these activities are happening within the same frame itself. So it's never an opportunity for the browser to go, okay, set the animation name explicitly to none, and then clear it so we can trigger a reflow where the value from the styles itself gets applied. And so we insert an artificial delay to go from one frame to another. One approach is basically set timeout and giving a small value. Could it even be zero milliseconds, could be 10 milliseconds, it entirely up to you. But since we are really targeting a frame refresh, using request animation frame seemed like the more logical approach. And so the approach that you're seeing here is where the value is set to none and on the next frame update, once this has been set, next frame update, go ahead and set the value of animation name to cleared so that way whatever is specified in CSS will kick in and that is the the magic sauce behind our ability to create research animation and if you find other approaches that are simpler if you find some quirk that doesn't make this work properly in a particular situation do let me know you know let me know on the forums or in the comments and I'll be happy to take a look now with that you saw a very quick overview of how to take something that CSS and JavaScript by default doesn't provide out of the box, the ability to restart an animation, but by taking advantage of some basic tricks in terms of how CSS works, how the browser refreshes style rules, we're able to kind of take advantage of some of those basic principles and create our own ability to restart a CSS animation. So if you have any questions, please post in the forums at forum.crypt.com where I and others would be happy to help you out with any of your animation related questions or anything web dev related, technical related, or just want to drop in and say hi to some of the smartest, most talented and friendliest community of web developers on the planet. Next steps, tell your friends and enemies all about it. If you like this video or if you didn't like this video, it's all good. Hit subscribe to be notified of new videos that I'll be recording. Follow me at Krupa on Twitter for smaller bite-sized updates on what's going on in either on content I'm creating or things I find interesting. And lastly, if you enjoy reading content, 
you might enjoy my books, both in paperback and Kindle editions. Uh, I think they're great, but I'm also pretty biased. So, but the reviews are pretty good though. So I don't know, check it out. I think you'll be quite pleased. And with that, I'll see you all next time.